Welcome to day 54 of Happier People Podcast here with me, Jerry Banfield. Would you like to explore the idea of what's called three to thrive that Tony Robbins mentions? He starts his morning off doing some priming, remembering how grateful he is, staying connected to the source or the creator or God as you might call it. And then he looks at his three to thrive, three things that he wants to accomplish during the day and then focus on getting those done. Now I'm giving this a try because I've noticed that I often lack focus in what I want to get done because the more things I want to get done, the more I end up feeling scattered and overwhelmed. So I look at doing three things today and I think, well, of course I can do three things. It'd be really easy to get three things done today. So why not get those three things done? And then sure, if there's five or 10 other things to do, I can work on them. But once I've intentionally picked out the three things, like what are the most important three things to get done today? Well, number one, I wanted to do this podcast. Get this podcast done. This podcast is great for me and there's lots of people, maybe you that have shared it's great for you. So I know that this is a good use of my time. So I get this podcast done or this vlog by now with a video done and then bam, I've got one thing done. Then I have two more things I want to do. I have books that are already all done. A book that's already recorded. All I need to do is literally go on Audible and upload the files. Now I have not done this even though it's been ready for a few days. I haven't done this because I've been doing more important things. Now, how many times in life do we go through life doing things we feel like are more important and we don't do our to-do list? If it's on the to-do list, is it really worth doing or do we just like the feeling that I'm doing something important, I don't have time for my to-do list? I am trying today these three things because I get overwhelmed easily. I make 10, 15, 20 things I want to get done during the course of a day and then I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I can't handle all the things there are to do. I feel like there's too much to do and then that often encourages me to do things that will be more of an avoidance behavior. It encourages me to do things to avoid doing anything else because while I have these 20 things to do, I can't get all of them done anyway. One of the things I've done very well in my business over the last two years is to have some specific focus on getting videos done. I've had that as one of my bottom line daily goals to at least try and get out a couple videos a day And I've stuck with that now for two years and that's made a gigantic difference in my business. So why don't I do the same thing with all my other tasks? Well, what I often get into making decisions based on is fear. So for example, my wife and daughter are out across the street at her parents' house then they're going to a class after that. So then my fear would dictate that I need to get all my videos recorded now because I know they're gone and out of the house. So I've got some quiet, I need to do my videos. Well, the problem is then when I behave based on, well, I'm afraid I won't be able to film any videos later so I'm gonna film them now. What if videos aren't the top priority after I've got this one video done here? What if I've got some other things I need to do that are more important? Well, I often make a decision based on fear. Well, I'm afraid I won't be able to do any more videos later. So then I do a bunch of videos and then I get to the end of the day like yesterday and I had just maybe a five or 10 minute task to get this Audible book uploaded which then could potentially be producing anywhere from 10, 50, 100 plus dollars a month and I just sat on it and didn't do anything. Meanwhile, I made all these videos then and some of the videos weren't as good a quality as they could be because when you make things out of fear, out of being in a hurry, the quality tends to be much lower. When you do things out of a clear choice to sit down and say, I really want to do this. This is one of the most important things I'm going to do today, I want to do this. So for me, this is great. I'm trying this because I usually have great time to work in the morning. 
So I'm trying the three to thrive idea. Just put three things down and this was difficult for me because of course I have five or 10 different things I wanna get done today. But the key is do the one thing first. Get that video done first here as I'm doing with this podcast. Although this is an audio first, but I'm doing a video for it as well. Get that video done first and then do the next two things that are most important. So I see it's the beginning of the month. I have about 10 people who I'm sending money to as co-instructors on courses. So it's time now to send them their payments. Well, I haven't sent them their payments. It's the third day of the month already. It's time for me to send them their payments today. And that's one of those little to-do list items that I go about my day thinking, well, I could just do that later. And then I think about it 10, 20, 50, 100 times. You need to send those people the money. You need to, have you sent them? When are you gonna send them? Well, I'll do it tomorrow. And when you wrap up, it only takes five or 10 things like that in my head to make me feel overwhelmed and feel like I have a bunch of things to do and then to try and escape from that by doing something important or hurrying around. The most ridiculous thing in life is to see people hurrying around who really have nothing important to do. Like when I used to hurry to personal training at the gym. I'd be speeding, cutting in and out of cars, and what? So I can get to my personal training appointment on time? Who cares? It's all about how I look. I wanna look good. I wanna look like I'm on time. And then I'm trying to do all these things before that. Why didn't I leave 10 minutes earlier? Because I was trying to cram my day full of every single thing I could handle. So I'm learning now to focus on taking things completely out, getting them done, finished, and then I have a sense of space in my head. I feel like there's room to do things. And then after I've already done the three things, then whatever else I do that day is great. I'm freeing up tomorrow's list to do a different set of three things. And as I've been mentioning a lot, I'm learning that it's more effective to get the things you're already doing cleaned up and organized than it is to be trying to bring in new things all the time. And I've done really bad with that in my business I hardly, I'm amazed I've been able to do anything as many as times as I'm trying to bring these new things in all the time. I was teaching on Udemy and things were going really well and I branched out into this co-instructor program where I started trying to teach all these courses with all these other instructors. And this is the one thing that Udemy cited when they banned me that they really didn't like. And while they said it was co-instructor relationships, while it technically was absolutely not against the policy what I was doing, they really didn't like how I was getting involved in all these classes all over the platform. And the worst thing was that it was actually slowing me down. It's easier to just make classes and teach something you know about than it is to try and work with 10 or 20 or 30 different people and be in the middle of everything. It's much easier. You hear when you read books that you need to focus, focus, focus. Well, what do you focus on? Focus on doing a good job with the things you're already involved in. Or focus on what things you're involved in you need to cut before taking on something new. I'm a little too eager to take on new things lots of times because I don't focus on specifically what I want to get done. I don't look around often at the beginning of my day other than the video. Now, thank God I implemented two years ago to try and do two videos a day on average. And that is one thing that I've consistently stuck with. I usually make a video as soon as I can in the day. And I've stuck with that and that's been a huge help in my business. Now it's time to take it one step farther. Make a system to handle all these little tasks as soon as possible. Especially when the beginning of the year starts, there's things like taxes, there's things like filing business renewal licenses, There's things that often make all these little to-do list items to pile up. And it really, when I honestly look in my head, it doesn't take very many little to-do list items piling up before I feel overwhelmed. And when I feel overwhelmed, I make dumb decisions with what I should do. 
I make grandiose plans. Like yesterday, I made this plan. I was going to advertise for $100 a day on Google and Facebook. And thankfully, I didn't do anything about it. And today, I'm like, okay, why don't I do $10 a day and run the same experiment for $10 a day and I can make a course on it. But the thing is, when I look at my three to thrive today, I have more important things that I want to do and need to get done right away. For example, getting that audiobook up and published. I want to get that done first. And then I want to send all my payments out or maybe in the other order. I want to send all my payments out first so that I'm squared away with all my co-instructors. I know when Udemy was sending me payments at the beginning of every month that I really liked getting the payment from them right away at the beginning of the month. It was uncomfortable. Sometimes it'd be like the 10th of the month. They're like, where's the money? So I will, right after this, I'll get those payments sent out to my co instructors and then I'll get that audiobook published. And then anything else I do throughout the rest of the day is a bonus. And I'm excited because Tony Robbins has used this system for a long time and it works good for him. It allows him to look around in his life and say, what things do I absolutely want to take care of today? And if those things are done, then everything else is just fun and joy and the focus. So then I've had this, three. this is the third day now, I've been thinking about, actually it's the fourth or fifth because at the end of the month I start thinking about co-instructor payments. This is the fourth or fifth day I've been thinking about the same to-do list item and it's time to get it done. Now imagine if I would have done it on the first using this three the thrive system. Now that would have been two days where I had more space available in my head. So I'm excited to try this system for productivity and keep going forward to see how this impacts my work because I'm noticing in my work I have a hard time trying to do the things that are most important in my business. There are things I do in my business that are worth $500 to $1,000 an hour. And there are things I do in my business that cost me money. That I spend an hour working and I'm a little bit, I've lost money at the end of it. And it's hard working online because you have so much freedom and flexibility. It's hard doing what I do because if you look at it like a coloring book, you give a coloring book with the lines. You can color in it and make a beautiful picture, but with me, there's a blank page. I have to draw the lines first and then color in them, or I have to just color scrape from scratch, and most of us have a hard time dealing with wide open freedom. Most of us work best in a very simple system, so it's up to me to make a system that works good for me and I don't have to come up with it. Other people are already using systems that are good for them. I literally just try the systems that work in other people's lives. If the three to thrive works in Tony Robbins' life, why wouldn't it work in mine? So I'm grateful I'm working on one of my three to thrive right now, and I hope to be done pretty early with all the other tasks. Now, I got the the inspiration to do this because Tony Robbins and his book Awaken the Giant, I most recently was reading about how most of us are activated and make decisions based on pain and pleasure. So this means everything we do is either based on trying to avoid pain, based on our belief that we will avoid pain, or based on our belief that it will bring us pleasure. So this makes to-do list items very difficult lots of times because if there's something to do like file your taxes and you've synced it in your mind up that filing taxes is painful based on perhaps a previous experience where it was, then you end up putting off doing taxes until the last minute and then you feel bad the whole time that you're putting it off. Your mind keeps reminding you, hey, you need to do the taxes. 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 Have you done your taxes yet? When are you going to do your taxes? I'm going to do them today. Are you going to do them today? No, you're not. Yes, no, I'm going to do them today. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you. And this conversation can go on for a long time and distract from the essential things that need to be done in life. For me, publishing books has been like this. At some point, I was really excited and just blasted in and went and published a book. And then 
Perhaps when Audible rejected my books and sent them back to me or looking at the revenue ports and seeing they weren't making any sales, somehow I got it keyed in my brain that doing my audio book publishing and doing my book publishing more generally is a painful process. So then the logical decision to make from a pain pleasure point of view is to avoid doing it. I, and then the amazing thing happens. I had a book before it was published for maybe a month. And in other words, it had it was ready to be published. I had everything back from the editor. I had all the book titles. All I had to do is literally copy and paste, stick stuff in, write a little description out, and the book's published. And then I'm looking at probably hundreds of dollars a month in revenue from that and it's sitting on my computer. You might ask, what am I doing instead of doing that? If you had something that would literally ready to go, in fact, you'd spent money to get it ready to go and you just needed to put it online so it'd start making money, wouldn't that be one of your top priorities today? Well, the problem is when we work on the pain pleasure cycle, we're not rational. We're not thinking about what is better for the long term. See, the best way to make pain pleasure decisions is to look at the big picture. In other words, what am I going to do today that will bring me the most pleasure or help me avoid the most pain in the long term? It's easy to get sucked into this instant gratification cycle where we've got to have the most pleasure or the least pain right now. And lots of times, and this happens on bigger levels too, we make these short-term decisions to avoid pain or get pleasure but then that ends up bringing lots more pain and less pleasure in the long term. It's easy to see this with government programs. You think, well, how? why did they start this program? It's obvious it wasn't going to work in the long run. Well, it's most important to look at it in my life. Why do I avoid doing something that rationally I know is good? Why do I avoid doing it? Why do I go about my day doing things I think are more pleasurable, like recording videos, and avoiding things that I feel more are like boring business tasks, like going to publish a book or sending payments on PayPal. The three to thrive to me is an opportunity to take rational conscious control of my behavior, to say, okay, what do I need to do today and it uses the same pain pleasure cycle. What can I do today that will bring me the most pleasure in the long run and help me to avoid the most pain in the long run? Well, if I get that book published and send the payments today, that will help me get the most pleasure and the least pain in the long run. Now today in the short term, it might bring me more pleasure to avoid doing both of those tasks out of feeling like I'm doing something important. And it might, Help me avoid the pain of going in, looking at a spreadsheet, copying, trying to add the numbers up, figuring out exactly how much every co-instructor gets this month. And it might be easier. It might help me today to just avoid a little more pain and get a little more pleasure to not do the things. So the three to thrive gives me a chance to look at the big picture instead of just looking at my feelings from moment to moment. A lot of the things you might call great that I've done in my business have been a function of being, being willing to get into the short-term pain. To look back in the analytics at things I've neglected and the pain of seeing how poorly I set various areas of my business system up, going in and fixing it. The pain of looking back through trying to figure out what's the best thing to do today. The pain of looking at no sales. The pain of doing something with no immediate result or gratification. The pain of turning off uh, the online ads with then the pleasure of having an easier profit margin and giving to others in the future. The pain of going in and s fixing all my equipment up, buying new microphones, buying a new computer, the pain of going in and making an audio and video recording setup that's extremely powerful based on the long-term pleasure of being able to use that over and over again to make videos. A lot of the things that we are most excited to accomplish 
require some conscious control over our pain pleasure programming. So I'm grateful for the help I've received with this today. My exercises today is to apply this three to thrive in my life and to see what kind of results I get out of it. To see how I feel after all three things are completed. To see the pleasure I get from knowing, okay, well I completed the most important three things today. I can do whatever I want after that. And then likely I'll start thinking, well, what can I do to avoid having some of these other things in tomorrow's three to thrive? Maybe I'll knock out a couple of these other tasks so that in tomorrow's three to thrive, I could do something like make a couple of videos instead of one. And then I'll have less of the business tasks to handle and I can just do more videos and classes. I appreciate you watching this. I share all this with you with the hope that looking at this way, inside what I do in my own habits will give you courage to look inside your own habits and continue to find ways to improve what you're doing. The world needs your help. The world is ready for your service. The world would love to have you at your absolute best peak performance. So I'm grateful so many people have helped me to continue to raise my performance level and I appreciate to have the chance to review that with you and maybe to inspire you to do something in your life today that will help you be the absolute most productive you can be. To get the important things done and to avoid feeling that shame of, oh my God, I'm just overwhelmed. I can't do all this. I can't handle everything. So thank you very much for watching this. I hope you have a wonderful day today.